This is chapter four, lecture two, conservation of mass. In this lecture, we're going to be looking at some uh, practical problems. So let's review the equations we developed from uh, the last lecture. So we have the formula for Q, we have the formula for M dot, and we have the continuity equation. So example 4.2, here we have a, a fire hydrant. We're going to look at the flow into the fire hydrant and out of the fire hydrant. So in this particular problem, we're told that the water flows into a 6 inch diameter barrel of a fire hydrant at uh, a velocity of 4 cubic, meter, cubic feet per second uh, at C. And it flows out at uh, uh, A and B. And so at A, the diameter is, is uh, uh, 2 inches, and at B, the diameter is, is 3 inches. And uh, we know what the flow is at A, and we're going to try to find the discharge at B. So in this particular problem, we're given the, the uh, volume flow rate at C. It's 4 cubic feet per second. We're given the velocity at A, which is 60 feet per second. So we can calculate the uh, velocity at C. It's simply Q is to C divided by the area at C. So since the area is uh, a 6 inch di diameter, uh, that's 3 inch radius. And so it's, uh, we take the Q value divided by pi r squared we get 20.37 feet per second. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to apply the continuity equation at, um, uh, throughout this problem. So remember, there's two parts of the continuity equation. Uh, the first part is, has to do with how much mass is being generated inside the volume. The second part is, uh, deals with the flow rate through the control surfaces. So first, what we need to do is define our control volume. So in this example, we're going to take um, the part outlined in red, and it's going to be a fixed control volume. So we're going to keep track of how much uh, fluid comes in to the control volume and how much fluid goes out of the control volume. Now, in this case, you know, this is, the water here is just moving in and out of the control volume. There's nothing being, there's no mass being generated inside the control volume. So this first term is zero. And the second term, we ha just have to keep track of, of uh, uh, you know the the, uh, the the Q terms, right? So it's this first term. Remember, this it's v dot a. So this first term is going to be negative, and these other terms are going to be positive. So we can now solve this because we know what the velocity at C is. We found that. We know what the area is at C. We know what the area at A. We know what the area at B is. So uh, this term is uh, v C dot uh, a C. Here's our VA and our AA term. And uh, the last term is our, our uh, VB times the area B. Remember, we have to use the radius, radii here. We don't use the diameter. So here we can calculate the velocity of B is 54.84 feet per second. And if we want to find uh, the volume flow rate, it's V times the area. So it's this value here times the, the area at... Uh, at, at B. So we get 2.69 cubic feet per second. So example 4.3, here we have air that flows into a gas heater at, uh, at A and exits at, uh, at, at B. So at A, its absolute pressure is 203 kilopascals at a temperature of 20 degrees C, and its velocity is 15 meters per second. When it exits at B, its absolute pressure is 150 kilopascals. Its temperature is 75 degrees C. Determine the velocity at B. So here we kind of uh, proceed by first writing down the continuity equation. And then we apply it. So here, in this case again, we just have air coming in, our control volume, and exiting out at B. So we're going to define our control volume as simply the, uh, the tubing that, con that connects the input to the, op the output. And again, since the gas is coming in and this exiting out, this first term is zero. So here again, we have to keep track of, of we got an entrance and an exit. So this first uh, V dot A term is going to be negative because uh, remember the area is outward normal and the uh, velocity is um, inward here to the right. So you have a different direction. So the, the sign here is going to be negative. The sign here is going to be positive because the velocity and the area vector are in the same direction. 
Now here we have to we have to be careful because it's not this V dot A because this is a gas, so it's going to change the density. So we have to use the full blown equation with the density in there. So uh, plugging things in, we know the only unknown here is uh, uh, the densities in uh, V B. So we can get a relationship between the velocity at B is uh, and the densities. So how do we find the densities? Well, you know, it's, it's a gas, so we can use the natural gas law. That's why we're given the, the pressures and temperatures. So from the slide before, we found a uh, relationship between the velocity at B and the, and the densities at A and B. So how do we find uh, these two values? Well, we can use the ideal gas law in, in each case. Uh, pressure at A is rho RTA. Pressure at B is rho B RTB. So we know what the pressures are, and we know what the temperatures are. So it's 20 degrees C, we have to uh, convert to Kelvin. 75 degrees C, we convert to Kelvin. So if you divide uh, this top equation by the bottom equation, uh, and rearrange terms and simplify, uh, you find that the density of A is divided by the density of B is 1.607. We can plug that back into the first equation we found from the previous slide, and we can find that VB is 10.7 meters per second. So let's take a look at the example 4.4, uh, and this is the first case we'll see where the first term in the continuity equation is not zero. So here we have a tank that has a volume of 1.5 cubic meters, and it's being filled with air, which is pumped into the tank at a rate of 8 meters per second through a hose uh, having a diameter of 10 millimeters. So here shows that you're pumping this air in. in. Um, as the air enters the tank, its temperature is 30 degrees C and its absolute pressure is 500 degrees Kelvin. Determine the rate at which the density of air within the tank is changing at this instant. So here we're going to define our control volume as the portion, the, basically the, the uh, tank itself. Uh, and, you know, in this case, the, since we're pumping in uh, a gas, air, the density is changing. Uh, you know, the flow into it's steady, but the density is changing. Uh, so here, you know, uh, we can't ignore this first term in the continuity equation because, again, it, the mass is changing. If the density changes, uh, the, you know, this first term uh, is changing. Density is changing. Uh, over the differential, so we're pumping air in here, so the mass inside of this is changing, so we have to take that into account. We also have to take into account that we're pumping in air through through our, our inlet. So in this case, both of these terms, will uh, we have to make aware of them. Now, we're told that the uh, uh, this volume is constant, so therefore, you know, the, the uh, we can write this first term as, as follows, right? So, uh, uh, you know, the, the control volume has a constant volume, so this first term simply becomes the partial derivative of density respect to time times the volume. The second term is just, uh, uh, we've got a minus sign here because air is flowing in and, and the differential area is out, so that's where the minus sign comes from. Density times volume times times area. Now, so this is our, our equation we developed on the previous slide. Uh, so what do we, you know, we need, again, we need, it's a gas, we need the ideal gas law. The relationship between the pressure, the density, and, and the gas constant, and, and the, uh, the temperature. Uh, so if you plug in the information that's given, the only thing we don't know is the, the density, so we can solve that. Um, and so there we end up with an, an equation, you know, we plug in the, the, the volume. Uh, we know what that is, that's 1.5 cubic meters. We, everything else is given here. We know the density at A, which we found. We know the volume uh, at A. We know the area of, of A. Um, so, you know, so the only thing we don't know is the um, the, den the density, he density here. But, you know, this is simply uh, uh, pretty easy. It's constant, right? So this is easy to, easy to calculate. So the... Uh, how fast is the density changing? It's changing by 2.41 times 10 to the minus 3 kilogram meters cubed per second. Uh, so this is positive, and so it indicates the density in the tank is increasing, is, is, which is what we expect. 
No, the example 4.6 is, is a little bit more interesting because here, uh, you know, we're going to use a uh, deformable uh, control volume. In the previous cases, all of our control volumes have been, have been uh, you know, constant. Their, their shape hasn't changed. So in this example, we have a two feet diameter tank that's being filled with water using one, uh, one foot diameter pipe. Uh, so here, you know, the, the, the water level here is rising. And so as this water level rises, our control volume, which is the portion in red, is going to change shape, right? Because the, the depth of the tank is going to increase. Uh, so the book calls this a deformable control volume. Um, so here, in order to calculate the value, again, we write down the continuity equation, right? Uh, and since the density is constant, you know, the, this is water, right? It's not a gas. Um, we can, uh, you know, factor the density out of this. And so this here, this ends up being uh, the integral over the dV, which is just the volume. And then so it's the derivative of the volume. Uh, this part turns out to be the density count comes out. And so this is the density times Q, um, Q at A. So we can fill in those those values. Um, so what is the volume uh, as shown in the picture? Well, it's it's uh, the volume of this part here, which is uh, this is simply a, a pi times r squared times y, right? So what's the volume? It's it's uh, the, you treat this as a circle, so it's a pi r squared and times the area here at the base times a certain y. Uh, that's the volume of that cylinder here. Uh, then you got the upper cylinder you got to worry about as well. So this is pi times uh, 0.5 is its radius times, uh, you know, so the whole thing is six feet. And if they call this y, well, then the part from uh, the, the height of this little cylinder here is going to be uh, six minus y uh, here. So this is pi r squared times the height, which is six minus y. Uh, and then we have to subtract off the... Uh, the density times times q, but, uh, but we're told what that is. That's the four cubic feet per second. So if you simplify this down, uh, you can you can you get this equation here, and um, you know by dividing both sides by pi, um, you can solve for dy dt how fast the the height of this is changing with time, which is 1.70 feet per second. But you can also, you know, there's another way to work this problem too. You can also work this problem as by considering a fixed control volume. Um, you know, only and only look at the the water in the tank of the instant when the depth is y. Um, in this case, you know, there's no local changes occur because they're they're fixed and the source term is zero. So you have the flow coming in here, um, v a times a a, and you also have the the flow here coming up, so that's uh, VB times um, AB. A, so if you plug those values in, uh, again, you get 1.70 feet, feet per second.